welcome back to my channel. I am Heather Tiedman and today we are going to be discussing why you should avoid Lexington, South Carolina if you can't handle these five facts. So before we get started, I really would appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm and I'll jump right in. So number one, Number one, I'm sure is not a surprise to any of you guys, but is the heat. They don't call Columbia famously hot for nothing. Um, as people like to say, um, it's not the heat that gets you, it's the humidity. And that is true. It is very much the combination of the heat and the humidity during our late spring and summer months. So it can be very, very hot. And if you are from a climate that is predominantly pretty cold, that may be a big adjustment for you. So definitely something to keep in mind before making your considerations into moving to this area. On the plus side of that is you're not having to deal with the cold during the winter. So we're not dealing with snow. It can get kind of nippy around here, but you're not dealing with snow. You're not really dealing with ice. Um, very, very rare we have either one of those. So something to keep in mind, but the heat is definitely a big thing that you need to take into consideration. I definitely recommend coming and visiting during our summer months just to get an idea of, you know, what you're in for kind of thing. And then as we're talking about the heat, along with the heat comes the bugs. Uh, we have these beautiful creatures called palmetto bugs. Um, they are <laughs> quite lovely. Um, essentially where they are, they're giant cockroaches. If you don't know what a palmetto bug is google it but be prepared it's it's not pretty um they do fly <laughs> so keep that in mind and they're not like your normal german cockroaches that are going to infest your house but they you know you will see one off here and there you can have your house sprayed so you don't run into them as often but they definitely like to come in to get out of the rain or get out of the cold and things like that so definitely something to keep in mind when you're moving to south carolina that seems to be like someone's biggest complaint in terms of bugs aside from the mosquitoes and the gnats we jokingly say that the mosquito is south carolina state bird and there's a reason for that so gnats are very bad during the spring and summer as well as the mosquitoes again you can have your yard um sprayed and you know hopefully help with that and it does help significantly but keep in mind that if your neighbors don't spray or things like that you may still see mosquitoes and gnats in your yard um, and if you are trying to do outside activities during the spring and summer months, you're probably going to run into those pesky bugs as well. Number three on our list is keep in mind if you are coming from a large metropolitan area like Chicago, New York, um, Charlotte, we are not a large city. We are not going to have the same amenities that a large city is going to have. We are considered a large town um, and you are going to have to travel a little bit for bigger entertainment things like zoos and uh, museums. Now, they're a pretty short drive because we are just outside the capital of, Colum you know, of South Carolina, which is Columbia. And you're not, they're not too far away, about 25, 30 minutes but they're not gonna be right there in town. I know a lot of people move here from big cities and are surprised that we don't have the same things that their city had. We're not a large city. Um, we are a middle, medium to large town. We're not even really considered a small city. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. I hear that complaint a lot and you can't really expect to move from a large city of millions of people to a town with, you know, a couple dozen thousand people, a couple dozen thousand, about 22,000 people and think to have the same amenities. It's just, unfortunately, we don't have the population to support all those different types of things. You're going to have to travel a little bit. But the nice thing about being centrally located in the state is you're about two, two and a half hours away from the beach, about two, two and a half hours away from the mountains. And you're also about an hour and a half away from Charlotte, which is a much larger metro area. So something to keep in mind that if you are willing to travel a little bit, Lexington may be for you. You will have all your basic necessities in Lexington itself. You will have some smaller entertainment uh, 
available to you in Lexington, but you are going to have to travel if you're, you know, really looking for something substantial, I suppose. Um, and another one I'll put into this topic a little bit is another thing that kind of catches people off guard. Lexington does not have a Trader Joe's. You are going to have to travel. There is one in Columbia. You will have to travel a little bit. It's about 30 minutes away, depending on where you live in Lexington. But we do not have a Trader Joe's. A lot of people ask. A lot of people have requested to have a Trader Joe's in Lexington. And Trader Joe's has said that we do not have their tar target demographic in order to support that. So just something to keep in mind. If you're thinking about moving to this area, that we are not going to be the same is a large metropolitan area. And we're gonna come into our fourth one, which are car taxes. Every year you will have car taxes in South Carolina. More than likely, you know, your property tax is gonna be very low if you own a, you know, your primary residence here, but they're gonna get their money any way they can. And they, well, you do have car taxes every year. And then you also, when you move from another state and register your cars here in South Carolina, you will have a one-time fee in, in Lexington, it is $250. So you will have to pay the property taxes on it. You will have to pay the transfer fee as well as, you know, your registration, driver's license and all that. Those are costs that you need to be aware of. Um, on the Lexington County website, there is a um, property tax estimator where you can go in and get an idea of roughly how much it's going to cost you every year in property taxes. Now, keep in mind that it goes down every year as the value of your car goes down. Um, and you can also apply for things like, you know, the high mileage deduction. It really doesn't take off that much, but you know, a couple of coins here and there will definitely help. Um, and speaking of property taxes is while our primary residence property tax is very, very low, you have to apply for it. If you purchase a home here in South Carolina, it is automatically taxed at the higher rate and you have to change over your driver's license, change over your car registration, and then actually apply for the primary resident, the legal residency tax rate. Um, that catches a lot of people. And if you don't do that, you're gonna be looking at tripling, if not quadrupling your property taxes every year. Um, and that can get quite costly. So definitely something that you need to remember if you purchase a home in Lexington is that definitely file for that legal residency tax. I always, anytime one of my buyers close, I will always send them a message about 30 days after closing just to remind them to do it. But because we pay property taxes in arrears in South Carolina, you do actually have until the end of the year to actually apply for it but ideally you're going to apply before October because that is when property tax bills come out so just something to keep in mind which is going to lead us into number five so that leads us into our last one which is daycares so if you are considering moving here go ahead come down visit see the site see what's around understand the area and tour some daycares you're, you're going to want to get your name on the list because you don't want to, you know, come here, need to work, and then you don't have child care to be able to do that. Um, I've seen lists anywhere from three, six, even as far out as 12-month wait list. So definitely get your name on this list. And I'll add like a little bonus one in here. If you are looking for a specialty, in, like in the medical field, we do have a lot of specialists in the area. But depending on what it is, you may have to travel to Charleston. Um, occasionally that does happen. I like to prepare people for that uh, situation. So if you have a lot of health issues that you, you may have to see a doctor regularly, be prepared that you may have to travel the two hours into Charleston. So that is all I have for you. Did it change your mind at all about moving to Lexington? If it did or did not, let me know down in the comments below. If you are considering a move to the area, I am always happy to help you. You can find my contact information down in the description box below. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. 
happy to um, help you find a home here. Whatever you may need, please feel free to reach out. And also down in the description box below, you will find a link to our Moving to Lexington Facebook group, which is going to have a ton of fantastic information, as well as, you know, things that you may not know of or think to ask that people that have moved here have started asking. You're able to get their opinions and their feedback from people that have already moved here from other areas. So I appreciate you watching this far and I hope you have a happy new year. Yes, I still have my Christmas decorations up, but it's only the 2nd of January. So I'll get them down this week. Bye.